Today we're going to be talking about island fishing. This is part two of two. And in the last video, we introduced rods, reels, and terminal tackle that you need. My name is Benji. Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. I'm here with my good friend, Anthony, who you, hopefully you've seen many of our videos that we've done together. We're at Island Tackle in Carson with Sam. Thank you so much for opening up the shop, mm -hmm. for allowing us to be here. You've been so kind. So today we're going to be talking about rigging and techniques. And so Sam is actually going to take us away and talk, talk about all the basic rigs that you need. You've got your box, you've got everything you need. Now you need to know how to tie them and how to use them when you're actually on the boat. So Sam, if you can talk about some of the basic, basic rigs that you're gonna need and if you wanna take away. Yeah, so it thanks. Um, we're gonna start off with the most basic thing, you know, which in the summertime is fly lining. So you're just basically tying a hook on the end of your line. You're, you're gonna be using typically a smaller hook depending on your bait size. So this is about a size two and you go a little bit smaller if you have smaller baits but a little bit bigger, if you happen to have larger like sardines, you can go maybe up to a size, maybe even up to a size 2.0. Yeah. So it really depends on the bait size. Bait too. size, yeah, yeah okay. mm -hmm. primarily. Also too, there are times where you might be using a larger hook like this for, um, for using squid and more in the springtime and uh, sea bass fishing. But this is the hook I'm gonna use to kind of demonstrate the most basic knot. I think most people have grown up fishing this knot. I still fish it a lot because I think it's really easy to tie. And it's really easy for me to show people. It's a real basic knot. It's just basically the clinch knot, and you're just gonna put the line through right through the hook, and then you'll kind of put a little bend in there, and then just twist the hook about six times, and you're gonna put the tag right through the loop that you've created, and then you'll put it right through the other loop that you just created by making that loop there, like that. You wet your knot, and you're gonna pull on the main line and it'll cinch down just like that. Okay, pull on a little tag there to tighten it up, cut your tag, you're good to go. So the fly line hook is gonna be how you do most of your fishing in the summertime, like I said, mostly with a smaller hook. If you get into a situation where maybe the fish are a little bit down or maybe there's a lot of birds picking your bait, things like that, or maybe there's a lot of current and you wanna get your bait down, you would also add a egg sinker. And putting that on there is simple. Obviously, you just slide it on there. This is a little bit larger one. Probably would be more on the sea bass side, which would kind of go good with this hook. But when you're using your bait hook, a sardine or an anchovy, you're going to be usually, usually using a much smaller egg sinker. Same kind of situation. You just slide it right on there and tie the hook to the end there. All the rest of it here, as far as your taddy jig or your AFCO jigs here, like Anthony was showing us earlier, same knot. You're not gonna add any extra weight to that. Reason being is that that extra weight is gonna actually kind of impede in the action of that lure. So all those kind of lures, along with the yo-yo jig and all the other jigs that we were talking about, you're just gonna just tie directly to the end of your line. So no extra weight needed for that. Do you tie any different knots? Anything that you would recommend? Uh, that's a great knot. Basically, the knot that you tie the best is the best knot. Uh, so yeah. if you grew up fishing that specific knot, caught a lot of fish on it, you don't have to change it. Pretty much all these knots are strong enough to pull in a lot of the fish we're chasing. If you tie the San Diego jam knot, it's a very similar knot. It's just where, where the, the loop comes out changes a little bit. If you tie the polymer knot, sometimes the fish are picky. They want a low, lower profile knot. The polymer knot's another really good knot. So on paper, there's stronger knots, but that knot is gonna catch anything that you need to catch. And whatever knot you tie the best is the knot you should stick with. I think Anthony did a demonstration of the jam, San Diego Sandy. Jam knot yep. in a previous video. So I'll link that video in the video description so you can see different options. But I love that you did that knot because it is such a basic knot. Everyone should know that if you're yes. starting to get into fishing. And oh so. man, and I've caught so many big fish on that knot. And yeah. I think it's one of those knots that because it's associated with a beginner type knot, sometimes people will want not want to use it because they feel like, well, I want to grow into a bigger knot or a better knot. But honestly, if you tie this knot well, I've caught 150 pound tuna on it, no problem. The most important thing about it, I would say, and maybe as an added tip, is that when you do go to cinch it down, you make sure you wet it. That's pretty much any knot, but also too, don't cinch it down too fast. You know, a lot of these knots, I've seen some videos where they like snap it to, to cinch it down. I'm not really sure why they do that, but you want, it, you want to cinch it down nice and slow and even, and then also pull on it, test it really good, you know? Most of the boats are gonna have some type of D-ring or something around the boat where you can test it. Once you got it tied on, Pull it, you know, as hard as you can, you know, especially if you're using heavier line. This is 30 pound uh, Isla line. You, you're really not going to be able to break it, you know, by hand if you tied a good knot. If you broke it, that means you need a retie, and that's the best time you want to learn that, not when you hook a fish of a lifetime. Uh, what other rigs are we looking at? 
Yeah, so that's going to be, like you said, pretty much 95% what you're going to do. The other part of it is going to be tying dropper loops. Dropper loops is going to be a part of fishing when we start using some of these torpedo sinkers, fishing the bottom, and that'll be something you'll use for both halibut and sea bass, same kind of rig. You'll do a double dropper loop when you fish a little deeper water for some rock hide. So a dropper loop is pretty easy to tie. You basically, you're gonna, the way I do it is that I'll start off by doing an arm's length just like that. Kind of really easy, most people's arms are about the same length. And then I'll do a little bit longer than a hand's length like that to make my loop. I'll go around and then you just twist right there. Do that about five times. And then you put the main part of your line right through there. And then I, I grab it with my teeth Cinch it, same thing, cinch it real slow, you wet it, and you're good to go. This is a pretty short loop here. This is gonna be more your, your uh, rockfish length. For doing your sea bass stuff, you do the same knot, but with something that's maybe gonna be about maybe a foot longer almost, you know, so, so quite a bit longer. And I'll show you guys kind of what that looks like there. So same thing, it'll be about an arm's length to start, maybe a little bit more with the sea bass stuff, but about an arm's length. And you could almost go like almost another arm's length to tie your loop there. And say, but it's the same knot. That's the thing I like about this knot is no matter how you're fishing, what you're fishing for, you're doing it the same way, just different proportions. Put it right in there. So you see it's the same knot, just a bigger loop there. And then what you could do here also, you can even make a bigger loop and then do a reverse, what they call a reverse dropper loop, where instead of putting your hook on the end, you could put your sinker here like that and just loop it right on there. Now be advised when you do do this, technically it's not as strong as doing a more of a surgeon's loop. And I think we'll show that knot a little bit as well too, but the proportions might be pretty similar. Actually a little bit big of a tag in here. And then you're gonna tie the same clinch knot that we just tied earlier. But like I said earlier, the, the, it's not as strong as the surgeon's loop. So if you guys wanna look that guy up, maybe we'll tie that too. That's your reverse drop loop here. So this is gonna be maybe a little bit on the long side, but there are times, especially if there's a lot of current, that this is gonna allow your squid to kind of be kind of going in the current like that there, right above the bottom. So for uh, white sea bass, do you recommend the reverse dropper loop? You know, sometimes one way or sometimes another, you know, I, I think the reverse dropper loop works pretty good if there's kind of a medium to a lot of current. If there's a ton of current, mm -hmm. like a lot of times fishing Channel Islands, up there, I mean, they can get like really crazy up there. You just can't, it's just way too much current and you're using much bigger weights. So you're gonna probably need to have something that's a little tighter to your line. You kind of wanna, you know, maybe even talk to the crew, see what, what's been going on with them. It's really gonna be more, more uh, conditions uh, related. Okay, so yeah, I, I noticed and I love the variance is uh, when we made our white sea bass video, Anthony did the surgeons, yes. which you're gonna show right now. Uh -huh. So it just shows you there's different options. Yeah. And again, it's whatever you're comfortable with and whatever yeah. gives you confidence. So I love seeing that different mm -hmm. uh, options, but you're gonna show us uh, the surgeons. Yeah, so the surgeons is actually really, uh, actually a lot easier to tie in, in, in a way. You make kind of, you double over your line, you make one loop and then you go in that three times two, and three there. And what this does here, the reason you would tie this is that you're gonna put your hook on the end here and this knot here pulling this way is a lot stronger. And one of the things you can do too is that after you've made that loop, is you could use that loop and tie even a loop, uh, a knot with that. So you would treat it as a single line, twist it same way, you would do maybe a few less twists. Put it in the bottom there. And through the loop you just made. And now you got a double line there. Once in a while these sea bass, especially when they get really, really big, they do have teeth, even the halibut do, but the sea bass probably a bigger problem because they're just bigger and stronger. But that double line is also gonna be helping you with that too. So now you can have Let's say you got 40 pound line, you, you know, they're just not gonna bite you off. And let, like Anthony was saying, these things are not line shy. You can pull as hard as you, as you want. And it kind of almost turns into like a, re, a reverse drop loop there. You would just tie your sinker to the end of that guy there. You're good to go. And this knot's really easy here. It's kind of like, like just a clinch knot, but without the, the improved part of it. Just twist it like that, throw it in there. You're good to go. Also too, since it's not quite as strong as the clinch knot, if you do snag the bottom, sometimes this thing will break right here. I don't know if I can break it here. I probably can't. But Anthony was actually showing me a nice trick just a second ago, is tying a, 
just an overhand knot right above it and that might break your line instead there so you know just another trick that he kind of put in there which i like i kind of like actually so lets you keep your hook and the rest of the setup you just sacrifice your weight which you're going to sacrifice anyway so just throwing that little failure system in there and then you know when you get it back up throw another weight on and get right back to fishing and then when the captain goes to make a move cut everything retie it and get back sometimes if we're using braid to fluoro it might be harder to like cut the braid the connection retie the whole setup and then get back to fishing. So just doing that little sacrificial piece in there makes it so that you could get retied real quick. The clinch knot that Sam just showed you for the weight is awesome because you don't have a big tag in. You can control the size of that tag in. So there's not a lot of wasted lines. So if even if you do lose, you know, six inches off of your when you lose your weight, retying it'll still keep you really close to being where you want to be in that zone. So it sounds like for rockfish, there's your standard dropper loop with a shorter loops with shorter, shorter loops yeah. so and then for the white sea bass and halibut do we want a longer leader or does it matter or how do you guys like to fish it based on the island i go to yeah. i adjust that so if i'm fishing uh and, and even what part of the island we're fishing mm. so sometimes at like santa barbara catalina you might see me fishing something a little taller off the bottom we might be fishing around more rock structure right on the edge of rocks i want that squid elevated sometimes like when i was fishing uh, santa rosa last time uh, we were fishing big sand flats it's a big area. The fish are just doing big laps through. It's almost like fishing trout at a local pond, really. Mm. And they wanted the stuff closer to the bottom. So that's why that leadhead and squid was so effective, just hopping it on the bottom. They didn't want it in the middle. They wanted it dragged on the bottom. That's where Sam's reverse dropper loop comes becomes very effective. And in those areas, you tend to find a lot more of our halibut. Yeah. So when mm. you're fishing a reverse dropper loop, you include more halibut options plus your white sea bass. Whereas maybe we're fishing a round structure in some kelp. I don't want a reverse dropper loop that's going to get tangled up. I'm going to do a taller minimum waist high, sometimes up into the stomach. That'll be from my sinker to my dropper loop and then the dropper loop a couple feet. That way my, my squid is up away from stingrays. That's another big problem. If you're too close to the bottom, sometimes those bat rays move in. You're fighting a 50, 60 pound bat ray. It's not fun. You're stressing your gear out and it's, you know, you're missing the white sea bass bite. So uh, I do like to keep my, my standard sea bass rigs a little higher off the bottom and a nice big loop. That way there, there's plenty of movement in the current. Less current, shorter dropper loop. That way you don't have a big old uh, sag in your line tangling up and twisting up. So with the heavier line we use, if you shorten that up, it tends to stiffen it up and t tends to keep it aimed in the direction, you know, away from your line. So it's not all tangled in a big mess. Adapt to the conditions, but that, that would be the reasons why. Lack of current, shorter dropper loop, more current, a little longer dropper loop, big sand drifts, go to a reverse dropper loop. So I got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is for rockfish. What pound leader should you be using for the islands? And then for white sea bass and halibut, what pound leader should you be using? So I, I like you for rockfish actually going a little lighter, not too, not, you know, no 40, 50 pound, although it'll work. Same thing like the sea bass, they're not really line shy, but it is easier to tie these knots with a little bit lighter line. So 20 pound test, 25 pound test max probably is all I would use for rock fishing. For the sea bass, you know, it depends, you know, that, that uh, even that halibut that they were catching here right out front, I mean, a lot of it was caught on 15 pound. It really kind of depends on the fishing, but I would say that you want to be versatile. You know, that's one of the reasons that we're going to take multiple rigs and we're going to take multiple sizes of fluorocarbon. Even with the rigs, whether we go reverse dropper loop, regular dropper loop, tight, long, you know, be open to the idea that, that maybe one way, one day is going to be the better way. The next day, it might be a little bit better another way. So don't be afraid to kind of change it up and maybe shorten it up or make it longer. Awesome. And the professional advice that I have for you guys today is aside from what we're learning here, always ask questions on the boat and utilize your deckhands. I mean, these boats are out there every single day. Some of these boats are daily boats yeah. um, going trip after trip after trip, same spots that they're dialed in on. And so they know what's working at each particular location. So don't feel too stressed out about having everything perfect because it's dynamic. I mean, yep. it's gonna be different every time you go out. So on the trip that you go out, ask the deckhands, hey, how should I be tying it? How long do you want 
the leader to be or how heavy should I be fishing it? So you just have a baseline of, hey, I can tie that knot. Now I can rig it up this way based on what's working at that particular time. Yep. Aside from that, can you actually tie um, both of these dropper loops one more time sure. and then fully and then let's show the camera kind of how they, what, what you should be looking at in terms of the sinker and the difference. And, Make it proportional and, yeah, and everything. Yeah. For rock, let's start with rockfish okay. first and then let's go ahead and show for white sea bass and white halibut. Bass. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much just like Anthony was saying, right about between belt and chest high is where that's going to end up, just right in there. So this is your double dropper loop for your rock fishing? Rock fishing, yep. yeah. Okay. You could have that hook. Okay, yeah. yeah we gave him the safety hook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not, it's not our first rodeo with right. Benji. <laughs> so, so obviously the, obviously the sinker is going to be on the bottom and these ones are going to be up vertical. You have your little yep. strips of squid or whatever you're using on there. Real easy, just drop down to the bottom, engage your, you know, whatever reel you're using and then just yep. wait for the thump thump yep. and away you go. Yep, exactly. And then now if we can tie a dropper loop for white sea bass and halibut and mm -hmm. kind of how that might look a little bit different. So we'll show it horizontally, but the weight will be on the bottom and we got like what, this is maybe 18 inches mm -hmm. or so. Yeah. Of, for the size of the dropper loop? Yeah, yeah. the yeah. size of the loop. Yep. So eight, that's, kind of a good rule of thumb. Yeah, and okay. you don't need you don't need to stress on it too much like you were saying. I mean, if it's a little bit longer from your end of your hand to your elbow, you're probably going to be fine. If you're a little shorter, you're probably going to be fine. So, yeah. but that's about the, that's a that's a good measure. And let's there. put one of these Aki twists on here. Mm -hmm. 5060, oh, oh, you know, whatever size you're comfortable with, they have in stock. That'll just be for your smaller baits. 8090, oh, oh, one of those two sizes, whatever they have in stock when white sea bass season happens. If you've been chasing white sea bass, you already know everything disappears off the shelf pretty quickly when they're biting. So right. 8090 so, is fine. So we're looking at, you know, distance. And then again, distance between hook to sinker depends on where you're fishing. Just yep. ask your deckhands. Yep. They'll even help you rig up if you need to. Yep. So. Every, the, even boats that fish in the same area have different recipes for how they put this all together. So that they, you know, some might recommend a three, four foot leader. Some guys will probably recommend something more standard, like an 18 incher and then height, different, different guys based on where they're fishing will recommend. So always check with them. They, they're going to know where they're heading to and they'll be able to recommend. So from the fly line to the dropper loop, that's probably going to be the majority of your fishing. Yep. And then you, at the islands, you're going to have the option to you know, throw some of these guys, you can throw improved clinch knot to tie this on or whatever knot you like, the San Diego jam, whatever you prefer. And so you can either jig these things vertically or cast out, correct? Yep. Yeah, any other small bait profile jigs, you know, there's a, a, a plethora of brands now. AFCO came out with some great options. You can vertical jig these, you could cast them out. There's, there's a ton of ways to fish these properly and the species they'll catch. I mean, these, if you were to say you could only take one jig to the island to catch fish, this would probably be the jig I'm taking. You could catch yellowtail, you could catch calicos, barracuda. I could drop it down and fish the, the springtime wow. stuff with it for shallow water rockfish. Even yellowtail on the bottom, I can vertical jig it like a yo-yo and then cast it out and keep it up high enough. If I'm on my way home, it's the last one I'm cutting off. Cause if we run into, uh, say we're coming across the 150 on our way home from you know Long Beach, yellowtail. We're seeing busting yellowtail again, or uh, calicos, or the captain slides into a spot of bonita or bluefin. There you go. That's the guy, you're gonna be the guy on the bow throwing this into a school of bluefin. It's heavy enough to cast, strong enough to handle the fish, and it has a great swimming action. So that's probably like the most universal bait out of everything we've showed you guys, fishing the island and a little bit of offshore. So maybe like an 80 gram and 120 gram? Yeah, so mix it up based on what you're seeing. Current dictates size of jigs typically. So if you're fishing super shallow, not much current, we could go down to a 40 gram. Sometimes the smaller baits are a lot more effective because that's gonna be a lot more natural, but it is harder to fish. But basically, the they make a, a variety of sizes. So you're just gonna grab whatever you can comfortably cast. If you're new to these style jigs, get the heavier one. You can cast it a lot further. And then as you get more confident with your setups, you could drop down to lighter ones and kind of see where that shutoff point for you is. Talking about crossover too, you know, that jig right there with the slow pitch rod yeah. and some lightweight braid on that, you know, narrow reel, you can rock fish with it too. 100%. So, I mean, it's a super, super good jig for a variety of things. For some people who quite don't quite understand why crazy fishermen own a thousand different setups, <laughs> having like these four or five different setups that we showed you in episode one, or in episode one, it kind of shows you why, because exactly like Anthony said, sometimes you be on a long cruise ride um, with not much action, and then you'll have a 10 minute window to try to catch the fish that you want. Yep. And if you only have one setup with the fly line set up on it or a dropper loop set up on it, while everyone's casting the one that they already have set up, you're gonna have to be retying. And so you wanna have it reserved 
for when you might need it. It's kind of the plight of every fisherman when I'm getting ready for a trip. I'm always like, what if, what if, what yeah. if? And that one setup's usually always sitting there, but that one time I promise it's gonna work out. And so that's it's why- It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So right. if you already have it, bring it. If you don't have it and you're trying to make do, we showed you some options that are a little bit more universal. As long, you'll get really quick at tying knots if you only go with one setup. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah you'll get really fast at rigging. It's kind of nice to have all the different options. That's why we have different rod and reel recommendations if you're brand new to the sport fishing game. Lastly, before we close, can you show us, Sam, just for someone that's brand new, kind of hooking a soft plastic onto a jig head and right. just the big test right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> it better not be cricket. I know, it's a big test. You know, we've all, we've all seen a few videos here. You kind of want to line it up to where you want it to come out here. In this case here, you actually, this thing has a slit on the bottom, and so that's the bottom. So they, you have that the bottom, that's the top. If, if you're using the war baits one, the hook that you're going to use there is a little bit different, and you're actually going to use the bottom as a guide as to as to where you're going to bring it back in. So with the war baits, you're going to be rigging it like more like that. This is too much of a small hook. This is the hook that Anthony was talking about replacing it with. So you can see that's a lot bigger. Uh, I guess I can do one and then do the other here. So you're going to kind of put that down just like that. And then you're going to twist it around because so that's where it's going to end up. And this hook here actually has kind of an extra tough piece there. That's an extra material. You can bend that guy over, put it right through that piece there. And that's basically where it's going to end up. Now that's going to be attached to that head there after you switch it out. So that's how that's, that's, how that's going to end up. Obviously not the straightest there. I did it in a hurry, but it's not too bad. And then we're going to put that on the lead head. That's the big test here because you got to make it straight through the whole thing here. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give it a shot here. What I like to do is, is you kind of learn after a while how far you're going to go. But in this case here, uh, depending on the bend of the hook, you're going to end up kind of stopping right around there when it gets there and, then, and start straightening it out. Uh, it's not too bad there. A little crooked on this side, but... That's basically how it's going to end up right there. One of the most frustrating things with that, with the repetition, right, is these plastics aren't getting any cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, an easy way, you know, Sam did a great job. It's right down the middle. An easy way for the beginners out there, take your lead head and line it up. Where does it need to be? On baits like the big hammer baits, they have the lettering going down. So that's my little cheat code right there. I put the hook on there so everything lines up and where the bend of the hook is, is where I want to measure it to. So if this comes down here, you know, to the E, then when I'm threading it through, I want the point to hit to the E before I pop it out. If your bait doesn't have lettering or the lettering's really faint on it, the other trick you could do is line it up to the point. You take your little point and make a nick in the plastic. Now you have a target. You're going to thread the, the hook all the way through till it hits that point and then pop it out. And your bait will, the hook will be the right distance every time. Now it's just on you to, to make sure that you guide that plastic on nice and slowly and take your time keeping it right down the middle. If you start pushing too much, it'll torque and that's when it comes out all cattywampus. So you just wanna make sure that you keep it nice and straight, take your time and I usually pinch it on both sides and slowly guide it on there and just keep working back and just pinch on both sides. I don't grab it and just start going. So that'll help you keep it straight perfectly every time without burning through a bunch of plastics. That's awesome. Thanks so much guys for sharing all of your expertise. Hopefully you've got some confidence when it comes to planning your island fishing trip. If you have any other questions, leave it in the questions in the comments below. I'll, I'll do my best to, we'll try our best to answer them the best of our ability. If you wanna get that real in-person help and ask any further questions, come into Island Fishing Tackle in Carson. Talk to Sam, he'll be more than happy to help you. Thanks so much guys. And until the next one, tie lines.